Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Jim, for having inviting me to talk a bit about something that maybe all of you have already known about um, pain in the head and neck and how we treat it using ultrasound. First of all, I want to thank all of you, Pas, Nico, Jeremy, Inge, Jinmesa, Dr. Citra Dewi, where are you from? Hi, Mas Alan, uh, Mika Bueno, Larissa, um, hi, Larissa, and <clears throat> NC, that in some of you, I don't know you, I'm sorry, but I want to greet you first. Dr. Henry from Palembang, I believe. Dr. Cindy, Dr. Nudin, how are you? Dr. Carolina, hi. Dr. Robert, Dr. Heladina Ellen is my colleagues from Bandung, Jim. And Dr. Wahida is from Makassar. Uh, okay, hi, good day. Uh, Melin. And Dr. Mariana, Dr. Milan from India. Hi, how are you? Okay. Uh, to be short, we have only one hour, I think, <clears throat> um, about head and neck pain, how we treat it. All of you, I believe, uh, are dealing with head and neck pain, right, in your daily practice, the same as me. And a lot of head and neck pain cannot be treated well because, uh, first, the diagnosis is not uh, always be clear to us. So, uh, to treat our head and neck patients, pain patients with ultrasound, uh, the first thing, the first rules are, the first that we must know three things. The first is we must know the diagnosis. The second is that we must know the diagnosis. The third is still we must know the diagnosis if we don't know the diagnosis, how we will treat our patients, right? But I'm not going to uh, talk about the how we gain the diagnosis. I will straight go through the <clears throat> how. Of pain that can cause head and neck pain. The head itself has scalp it has skin, it has nerve, it has uh, uh, blood vessels, it has uh, muscles, it has bone, it has um, brain, all can cause pain. The neck also, the face also. So uh, the second rules are that we must treat the source of pain, right? So for example, if I have uh, temporal mandibular joint pain caused by uh, arthritis, for example, I must treat the joint itself either using uh, rehab modalities or by doing only compressing with ice or heat, depending on how uh, many, how long the pain is already occurred or by giving the patients some oral medication or we need to do uh, intervention uh, procedures if the pain is already uh, occurring. So for maybe two or three months or more and already have given a lot of medication, but still there the pain, then we must think about how to treat the patient with the medication uh, delivered straight into the temporal mandibular joint, right? But in so many cases, um, we cannot treat the source of pain. For example, in the head and neck area for preseminal neuralgia, uh, the first uh, choice of treatment is, uh, here we have a neurologist, a lot of neurologists here. Maybe we can choose a carbamazepine or something like that. I will not talk about the oral medication, but once we need to treat the preseminal ganglia directly there, inside our skull, oh yeah, bisa tolongin, uh, kepala. <clears throat> then how can we reach the foramen ovale where through the foramen ovale we can reach the trigeminal ganglion. Here all is bone, right? So then if we cannot treat the source of the pain, <clears throat> 
can we still treat the pain? Uh, Dr. Citra Dewi, or else, under else, if you want to give an opinion, please feel free to speak or text. I will read it. <clears throat> um, for me, in my daily experience, if I cannot reach the source of pain to be targeted with the uh, needles that then I can put the medication there, what I can do is uh, pain is always um, caused by inflammation, right? Inflammation in the <clears throat> source of pain. If the trigeminal uh, ganglion is compressed, then there will be trigeminal neuralgia in our face. The trigeminal ganglion will branch into three branches here. The my uh, what is that? It longitude. My first <laughs> longitude. Yeah, pointing yeah. finger is uh, correspondence to the V1 nerve of the trigeminal ganglion. And my uh, middle finger corresponds with the V2 branch of the trigeminal ganglion, right? And uh, my uh, ring finger corresponds with the V3 uh, branch of the trigeminal ganglion. The ganglion in itself lies here, inside the skull here, in the basis of the cranium, can you see it? And will comes out as V1, V2, V3 from the foramen ovale and foramen orthotundum here. Okay, this is foramen. Uh, this is foramen rotundum. This is foramen ovale. Okay, comes out from here. So if the target is here, how can we reach it from outside? Very hard. So then, depends on the age of the patients. If the patient is younger, less than 50 years old, the choice of treatment is operation or using gamma knife. The result will be good. But then if the age is already more than 50 years old, the best treatment, according to the evidence-based medicine, is using radiofrequency, but the approach is using a uh, fluoroscope. So now the question is, can we reach the trigeminal ganglion there inside uh, the basis of cranium through this foramen of Allah inside there. Can you imagine it? We cannot enter from this side because this is our neck and uh, spine, right? From here, from the anterior one, we cannot also, we cannot see anything here, right? From here, cannot also. Because the ultrasound beam, once we put our ultrasound like this, for example, the beam, the sound of uh, the beam sound will reflect it almost 100% because this is hot structure. So what I can do, what we can do, what can I suggest is that um, we can block the nerve where the branch of the V1, V2, V3 comes out outside the skull. Here, above superior from of the orbita there is a hole here called supraorbital uh, foramen where a supraorbital nerve comes out the supraorbital the largest branch of the uh, um, ophthalmic nerve which is the v1 branch of the trigeminal ganglion Okay, so by doing the blockade of the uh, supraorbital nerve, hopefully we can cover the area that innervated by the supraorbital nerve, which is the frontal area here and the upper eyelid through this scalp until the cervix. So hopefully we can treat the patient using this blockade if the a trigeminal ganglion involvement is the V1, the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal uh, ganglion. If then, mostly the involvement is V2 and V3, right? The V2 branch outside the skull will be through this hole. This is the infraorbital nerve, which is the branch of V2, which is the maxillary nerve. 
okay, that will innervate the this area, the maxilla until the lateral area of the nose and the lower eyelid. So hopefully, if the pain is uh, occurring here, we can try the infraorbital nerve block. But then for the V3 <coughs> here, the V3 branch, one of the branch that comes out from the skull is the submental nerve that comes out from the submental uh, foramen here. Okay, so more or less is like that. I will show you how. Do you need the slide to be shown? Okay, if you need it to be shown, then I will show it. Uh, yeah. Can somebody help me, please? Okay, um, it is, do you see it? Uh, can you read it? Because I read it from here. Uh, okay, this one. Okay, uh, slides you. Okay, so. I've already talked about this. I'll skip this one. Okay. Ultrasound guided interventional pain management technique on the head. Uh, we have a lot of it. Supraorbital, infraorbital, mental nerve block, maxillary and mandibular nerve block can be approached also, but we cannot reach the trigeminal ganglion. <clears throat> there are also greater and lesser occipital nerve block, auri temporal nerve block, greater auricular nerve block, temporal manual joint, and a lot of uh, structure that can we uh, do intervention to cure the head pain, depending on the cause. So then, um, because there's a lot of uh, diagnosis, a lot of blocks that we can do, a lot of treatment, a lot of procedures that we can do, maybe I will try to do three or four procedures for you here. Okay, um, the first one is the supraorbital nerve block. The supraorbital nerve block, as I have said before, it is the branch of the uh, frontal nerve, which is the largest branch of ophthalmic nerve. You can, show, you can see it here in the slide. The largest branch of the ophthalmic nerve. It is pure sensory nerve. And it will come out from the skull through the uh, supraorbital fissure, and it will pass uh, anteriorly to innervate the frontal area here, the upper eyelid, and the uh, scalp until the vertex. Okay, back to the previous slide. Okay, it can be used to treat if we have trigeminal neuralgia patient, but we cannot use the uh, fluoroscope or the patient doesn't want to have radiation or else then we can try to uh, help the patient using the supraorbital nerve block or if we have patients with a uh, postherpetic neuralgia, herpes zoster, supraorbital nerve entrapment, something like it or we want to help the anesthetist to do uh, uh, local anesthesia during the uh, surgical procedures then we can do this supraorbital nerve block. How we proceed, I will show you here. Uh, Sister Ebe, I have nurses here. This is uh, Nurse Ebrina. Nurse Ebrina will help me with the uh, ultrasound scanning. Okay, so the branches of the frontal nerve is one is to the supraorbital nerve and the second the supratrochial nerve. I will not uh, show you the supratrochial nerve, but I will show you only the supraorbital nerve block. Okay, the position of the patient is lying supine like this. Okay, I need a pillow, please. Bantal. Bantal is pillow. Okay, we see here. This is the eyebrow eyebrow of uh, nurse Ebrina. Thank you. Oh, tapi jadi susah ya. Terlalu tinggi. Gak usah ya? Gak usah bantal ya? Oke, okay, sorry I talk a bit in Bahasa because uh, I need to talk 
speaker to my colleagues here. I need a linear probe because the because the scalp here is very thin, right? Maybe it's less than a half centimeter. So the choice of the probe is the linear one. Okay. I always uh, force myself to do to hold the probe like this. Uh, which one you prefer is okay, but for me this one is nice. Three fingers to use to hold the probe, and the other two fingers to uh, anchor my hands onto the patient's body, so then the probe will not run here and there. Because when I do intervention, I must hold the probe still firmly so then the structure seen in the uh, screen will not get lost okay so try to palpate here uh, at the eyebrow palpate it maybe you can feel you, you can try it to your eyebrow you can palpate it maybe you can feel there's a gap there a fissure about uh, two and a half centimeter from the midline this is the nose to the midline here Maybe you can feel a uh, pulsating of artery there. Do you feel it, Adrina? You said yes. <laughs> Let, let's, let's prove it, okay? I hold the probe with the mark here as the left side and left side of your screen, left side uh, in the monitor of the ultrasound, okay? So the left side means the uh, medial side of Ebrina's uh, head, okay? I put the probe there about two and a half centimeter there where I can feel from the surface landmark that there's a fissure there, okay? I put the probe like this transversely at the head, okay? And uh, fortunately, I directly see the supraorbital fissure. Can you reduce the depth until one centimeter, please? Thank you. Satu centi. Okay, here. Okay, can you see, can you see the fissure there? Can you see the blinking? Uh, can you see the blinking of the pulsating artery there? Okay, put on color, please, color. Okay, you can see the reddish and the bluish of the pulsating artery, supraorbital artery there. Okay, proceed, please. Okay, stop there. I will show you on the screen here. This is left side. Tolong dong, pakai jari aja. Okay, this is medial side, okay? And I will stand up, sorry to cover your seat. And this is the lateral side, okay? This is the uh, periosteum, the bone, the scalp, okay? And this is the gap where the uh, supraorbital fissure or foramen is. Okay, and the artery here is the supraorbital artery. Along with the supraorbital artery runs the supraorbital nerve. I cannot see the nerve here, but roughly the nerve is this one. Okay, we need a uh, higher and uh, ultrasound, but the nerve is this. Okay, so then if we have a V1 a trigemina, neuralgia patients and we cannot reach the fluoroscope and the patient cannot afford the uh, charge for the fluoroscope or we don't want to use the fluoroscope or we cannot do the fluoroscopic uh, guidance to treat the V1 uh, trigeminal neuralgia that we can try to do the supraorbital nerve block like I've shown you before by putting the probe transversely at the about two and a half centimeter from midline in the eyebrow, touch that there is a fissure there and try to palpate to feel that there's artery there and put the probe there and you will see this figure. 
and then how to reach there we can reach the target there by inserting needle either from the medial side or from the left side and try to reach the target here okay this from the lateral side or from the oh sorry or from the medial side until here okay but then you see that the structure is so superficial less than one uh, less than 0 0.5 centimeter so then we need to translate the probe a bit medially or laterally depend on where you want to insert the needle from either from the medial side or from the lateral side i used to insert the needle using my left hand so then i'll buang color tolong again i put the probe there as i uh, shown you before this is the gap right kasih color okay you can see the artery put buang dulu colornya okay this is the gap put color buang dulu colornya okay okay color you can see the fissure okay you can see the artery okay the artery will be seen if we are facing the artery or we are heading away from the artery okay but if we want to see the fissure then the artery will be gone here but the pulsating is there right i want to insert a little from my left uh, using my left hand so then I translate since I translate the probe to the right side to the lateral side then kasi kalarnya ke kiri so then here okay ke kiri lagi apa kira sini saya terima ke kiri lagi okay so then please 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 okay so then The fissure is this one, okay? The blinking of the artery here, but the color is not seen because I'm focusing on the fissure to be seen. Then the artery is not perpendicular to the probe and not otherwise. So then, although I don't see the color, the bluish or the reddish of the artery, I know that the artery is there. So my needle will be inserted from my left hand side because I use my left hand in plane from from medial into here. Here like that. So the needle will travel not too long, just into here. And then we do aspiration. So the question is, what needle are you going to use? I use uh, 25 gauge needle and one and a half cent, uh, one and a half inch length needle is enough because the depth is only 1.5 centimeter. Into here, just outside the foramen and do long aspiration because then if we don't see blood, we are not uh, always not in the lumen of the artery so we do long aspiration so once we see uh, blood there we adjust the needle tip so we are not in the lumen and after there's no blood means negative aspiration we put inside i use i usually use lidocaine one percent don't use two percent lidocaine because two percent will uh, cause motoric block although this supraorbital nerve is pure sensory but then because this area is uh, not uh, too compact then it will spread around here but and then other nerve will be blocked okay and other nerve uh, if the nerve consists of motor part also then the motor will be paralyzed but uh, of course although only only for when maybe one or two hours 
then the patient will complain, right? I don't want the patient to complain, so I always use 1%, usually less than 1%. Lidocaine, 1 cc is enough, and we turn the color on always to see the spreading there, right? And then put dexamethasone, 2 milligram is enough. Okay, then withdraw it and quickly press this area with your alcohol swab or uh, anything that you usually use. First, to um, prevent hematoma because this is highly phosphorus area. And before you do the procedure, don't forget to do our antiseptic procedure because if there's infection, then we are done. Okay, and then if hematoma still happen, we can ask the patient to uh, do ice compression there, so then the hematoma will reduce soon. Okay, any question? This is the first one for supraorbital nerve block. Okay, and the second one is the infraorbital nerve block. It is used for me if I don't want to use the fluoroscope. I can use it to treat the V2 involvement of trigeminal neuralgia with the Superficial branch is the infraorbital uh, nerve, which comes out from the infraorbital foramen here, just about one and a half centimeter below the eye here, more or less uh, two centimeter from the midline. Okay, so all is in this line. This is the supraorbital nerve here. Here is the infraorbital nerve, and the other one is submental nerve here. Okay, the slide, well, the slide first, please, because I believe you want to see the slides. <coughs> the infraorbital nerve is the branch of the V2, the maxillary nerve branch of the trigeminal uh, ganglion. Sebelumnya, oh, setelahnya, setelahnya. More, 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 more. Okay, the infraorbital nerve. Lagi, lagi. Pasti saya aja. Okay. The infraorbital nerve is also a pure sensory nerve arising from fibers from the maxillary nerve. Okay. And it comes out from the skull through the inferior orbital fissure. Okay. It passes along the floor of the orbit here in the infraorbital groove along if uh, the supraorbital nerve along with the supraorbital artery the infraorbital nerve along with the infraorbital artery. And it will cover the area of the inferior eyelid to the maxillary area at the face here until the lateral nasal and the upper lip. And back to the previous slide, it can be useful also to treat the infraorbital nerve. Or even if we want to surgical to do surgical anesthesia, but of course, because I'm not anesthetist, I will not do that. Okay. But if you are anesthetist, you can do this. Um, how to do it? Let me show you again directly to uh, nurse Ebrina. Okay, put the patient in supine position like this and try to find the uh, foramen here, just about more or less one and a half centimeter inferior to the uh, eye, about two and a half centimeter from the midline here. You can feel a foramen there. Okay, put a linear transducer transversely at the face. Hi, Alfred, my son, with the cat. Here, here. Hi. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we are working from home, right? So there is my son, there is my cat, but they are not interfering me, so it's okay. But if you are disturbed, then just tell me, okay? Mm -hmm. Put the probe here. Okay, using three fingers to hold the probe firmly and two others finger to anchor my probe firmly on the uh, Ebrina's face. Kasih dua senti. 
And the same is the supraorbital nerve. Try to find artery there. Okay, satu setengah senti boleh, one and a half centimeter. Okay, there's the blinking of artery there already. Turunin wataknya. Okay, here. Try to find the foramen. Okay. Okay, here is the uh, foramen already. Yes, in it. And here's the blinking of the artery here. Okay. The blinking of the artery, the pulsating of the artery, but to uh, be clearly seen, the artery, then I must tilt the probe like this there. You see? Okay. But then the foramen is not so clearly seen. I want to be like this. <clears throat> but if you want to do this, to do in this way, it's okay also. Freeze you, Pasmera. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. All can see that the artery is there, okay? So this is the infraorbital uh, foramen where the <clears throat> infraorbital nerve, which is the branch of the V2, which is the uh, maxillary branch of trigeminal ganglion is, comes out, okay? So then how to approach it? You see that when I hold the probe like this, okay, the nose is on the way if I want to do injection from the uh, left side using my left hand. So for example, if the uh, occurring nerve entrapment or trigeminal nerve is at the left side of Ebrina's face, then I will hold the probe like this, right? Then how can I insert the needle when the nose is there on the way? So then I must uh, do it from this side and then put some more gel here, okay? I translate the probe more to the nose so then I can proceed from my left hand side, okay? But then, if doing so, I will show you that it will be maybe even harder to reach the target, okay? Because if the uh, scene is only like this, I will must uh, insert the needle from my uh, right side. The needle will travel long from here to this area, right? And it will, it will hurt the patient. So what I will do is I translate the probe more medial. Okay, like this, uh, safe one there, yeah. So the target is this one, right? This one, okay. I translate the probe more medially than a color recognition. But then the picture is gone, okay? But don't be afraid, I need more gel. Gel, please stop it in your do you understand? Kasih saya aja means give it to me. Okay. okay, so I put more gel to the gap between the nose and the cheek because there is a area that is not covered by the probe if I do it that way. See, now I can see all the structures there and the foramen is still there, okay? And it is very highly vascular, be careful. See, this. Okay, so then I will insert the needle from my left hand side here using my right hand, sorry, right hand side and Insert my needle from here to here, but I prefer to do it out of plane. Out of plane, why? Because then I will not miss the foramen from other structures here with this blinking with the artery, right? So I just put the probe like this, unfreeze, where the structure is clearer. Sin, kasih ke kan ke kiri, otaknya.
here you can see the uh, bluish and reddish of the artery there at the middle of the screen before here. Okay, there, okay, please. Okay, okay. Then I do out of lane technique. See that uh, this probe more or less is four centimeter, and this is uh, one third of the length of the probe. So then I insert the needle this way. Insert the needle in the one third of the length of the needle from the midline. Insert it out of plane. Out of plane mean when I insert the needle too deep, then I will touch the bone, right? So what I do is I insert the needle very superficially, like we are doing the subcutaneous injection. Here, for example, this uh, the yellow dot here. The yellow dot is the yellow dot is there. If I insert the needle like this, where the superficial means that with when the target is the red dot, then I will I'm not in the target yet. So then what I do is I withdraw the needle a bit and make the direction of the needle steeper a bit, not too much. So I will reach here, for example, but it's not yet there, right? Okay, and I withdraw it a bit again and make the needle steeper more and hopefully I will reach here and then here. Okay, and we will touch the bone actually there because it's foramen already and we we'll, uh, uh, do long aspiration just as we do the supraorbital no block, no blood mean negative aspiration and give lidoka in there. 1%, 1 cc is enough, and give dexamethasone a half uh, ampule is enough, and then uh, withdraw, needle, withdraw the needle and quick compress the area. Okay, the needle length is enough using the uh, one uh, inch needle, 25 gauge needle is enough. Okay, be careful of hematoma, be careful of infection, so do our antiseptic, uh, we sorry, the uh, antiseptic uh, procedure quickly, okay, because we don't want to give infection to the face area that will cause so many blood vessels there that they can lead the infection to the brain. Okay, we don't want patients to get meningitis or encephalitis because we do the injection, right? The third one is the submental. The third one is the submental nerve block. The submental nerve comes out from the submental foramen here. We can feel uh, foramen here. You can touch your own. Uh, mandible at the front side at the mental area we can feel position of artery maybe or not but we can feel the fissure there okay but i want to show you the slide first slide okay here is the slide for that one before okay i will not uh, talk too much about it anymore because I've already done it. Okay, the mental nerve block. The mental nerve, the submental nerve is also pure sensory nerve that is the branch of the mandibular nerve. So again, if we have trigeminal neuralgia patient, we cannot use the fluoroscope. We can try to use the ultrasound nerve block to the mandibular nerve if the, <coughs> if the involvement is the V3. The mandibular branch of the trigeminal uh, ganglion. The submental nerve exits the mandible via the mental uh, foramen at the level of the second premolar here. Okay, and um, what we can do? I'll show you. Slide lagi coba. Uh, no no no. Biarin saya aja. Kok bisa?
Okay. Here. Uh, besides of doing uh, trigeminal V3 uh, treatment for the patients that need ultrasound uh, help, we can use this to treat herpetic neuralgia in the V3 uh, innervation area, or we can do it for mental neuralgia or mental nerve entrapment. Okay. And now, how we do it, how we proceed. Put the patient in supine position, try to find the surface landmark and put the probe, <coughs> the linear probe transversely in the submental area like this, just in line with the supraorbital, infraorbital nerve foramen. Put the probe here like this, okay. Here. It's quite easy. Okay. Oh, jangan kasih color. Buang color. Jadinya pada kemana tuh? <laughs> Adina is uh, quite... Oke, okay. kasih color ya. Ke kanan. Kirimin kotaknya dikit. So you can see fissure here. <clears throat> and you can see pulsating of artery here. Okay. This one. This one is artery. Okay. And the foramen is that one. Okay. I just tilt the probe to find the artery. Okay. But if uh, it needs quite some time to find it. But I can see the foramen, I can see the pulsating of the artery. Just freeze it there. Freeze it, please. Okay. So, the target is this one. Okay. And fortunately, I've already in the space that I can manage the tissue, please. Mm -hmm. I can manage the uh, submental nerve block using my right hand because the space from the uh, middle entrance from the right side is already at hand, so here. Okay, or is infiltration or is blocked, but if we don't use the ultrasound that we can miss the target. Okay, once we reach the target, then we do long aspiration just like before and then give lidocaine 1%. Uh, once you see it's enough and give uh, add uh, two uh, milligram of dexamethasone, withdraw the needle, compress it quickly. We don't want to uh, give hematome to the patient. Okay, that's all that we can do for uh, trigeminal neuralgia if we use uh, ultrasound. There's one more procedure that we can do, but it's more advanced. I don't believe that you want to do it, but I'll show you, okay? Which is called the, uh, slide please. This one. Ta -da. This is the slide, okay? For the submental nerve block. Just the same, right? This is the, uh, foramen or submental, we insert the needle there. We can do it out of plainly as well. Okay. Wait a moment. Okay. Then, um, we can approach it using the intra or, uh, intra orally approach, but I don't want to do it because it's not clean. Maybe if you're a dentist, you want to do it, please feel free to do it. Okay, then so then I will not show you because I don't do it. The more uh, straightforward technique to treat the V2, V3, trigeminal neuralgia is doing the coronoid approach to the maxillary and mandibular nerve, not into the ganglion itself because 
of the very complicated structure in the face area. I will show you. Um, here. Okay. Bisa dibuang gambar saya. Oh, nggak apa-apa deh. Nggak apa-apa. We see here. The trigeminal ganglion is inside the skull, right? Ini nggak apa-apa. Minta ininya lagi. Here. Okay. Uh, that picture is like this, right? Uh, oh, this way. <laughs> Sorry. Like this, right? Terbalik. Ini gini. Huh? Ini. Enggak, itu gambar itu. Terbalik. The same. That's the same, Dr. TCT. Yeah, that's the same? That. Oh, okay. Because I'm confused. Then the trigeminal ganglion is inside here. Through the foramen ovale here. Inside the basis cranii there. But then how we reach there using ultrasound cannot. From here, from here, from here, cannot be reached. So what we can do is do infiltration block actually from here. This is the uh, temporal mandibular joint. Okay, this is the condyle, and this is the coronoid process, and this is the mandible. The mandible is uh, below here, and this is the maxilla. Right? This is the hole here. This is called coronoid uh, knots here, we can insert our needle right there where the uh, you need a mouse, mouse, mouse. where the V2 branch of the trigeminal the V2 and V3 branch of the trigeminal ganglion runs in here. Okay. Uh, the feet one is sensory fibers, the feet two is sensory fibers, then and the feet three has some part of motor fibers. Okay. So then uh, here, this is about anatomy where I talk about before that the trigeminal ganglion is inside the cranial fossa in the mechal cave. Here, this is the complicated structure because all is bone here. Okay, so then if I cut the face like this coronally, you can see outside here is the masseter muscle here. Okay, and inside there will be medial pterygoid, and then here, just above the uh, masseter here. In between the zygoma and the uh, mandible, there will run temporal muscle. And inside, there will be lateral pterygoid. And the V2 nerve branch of the trigeminal ganglion will run here. This area is called uh, pterygomandibular space. Okay, so. It is a triangular space covered by, uh, bordered by, at the lateral side, the mandible and the masseter and the temporal uh, muscle. And uh, at the superior part is the uh, lateral pterygoid and the medial part is the medial pterygoid. Okay. So then <coughs> to reach there to do infiltration, uh, block to the V2 nerve is doing this one. Insert the needle into here, just like at the slides, okay? Try to reach the PMS, the pterygomandibular space there using ultrasound because this is whole. So hopefully we can reach inside, right? But if we put the probe here, we cannot see nothing. Okay, so slide again, please. So then, Put the patients in uh, lateral decubitus. Sorry, it's not so fine position. Back, kneeling back. Lateral decubitus. Yeah, kneeling. Lateral decubitus position. Then try to find the try to find the this one. 
coronoid nodes. And so then we try to find the temporomandibular zone. Okay, here more or less this is tragus, this is tragus, and this is lateral of the nose, right? Make imaginary line from the tragus to the lateral nose. Okay, then palpate it here, palpate here, then you find a notch. Okay, try it yourself. I find a notch here. Okay, and ask the patient to open and close her mouth. Huh? Hmm? Hmm? See, you feel it? See, okay, you feel it. So then put the prop simply there. Okay, we use a linear probe again because it's not too deep. Use three fingers to hold the probe and two other fingers to make the probe firm on the patient's face, okay? This is the tragus, this is the nose, imaginary line here. Just in front, one and a half centimeter in front of the tragus, put the probe there. And what you can see is this one, okay, buang color. I want to see the temporomandibular zone. Buka mulutnya. Tutup. Okay, not yet. Buka. Tutup. Okay, so this is the temporomandibular joint. Okay, this is the TMG. Okay, but what I'm going to look for is the coronoid process. The coronoid process is this one in front of the uh, joint. Okay, freeze it, please. Eh, tunggu, unfreeze. Increase the depth, please. 20. Okay. Okay. Enggak. Increase the depth. 25. Okay, so to the plain, open the mouth, close the mouth. Okay, please, please. Okay, this is the coronoid process. The coronoid process is this one. The coronoid process is this one, okay? I put the probe previously in here in temporomandibular joint, okay? And then I try to find the coronoid process where then if I see the coronoid process, I will hopefully can see the inside of the skull. But then what I see here is the coronoid process only. Right, this is all bone. I cannot see anything. Why? Because then it is covered by the ramus here. So what I can do is ask the patient to open and close his mouth, her mouth. So then I will get rid of the ramus here. Okay. This is the nose. This is the tragus. I will feel that there is a gap here, which hopefully is the coronoid knots. Okay, I put the probe here. Okay, this is bone, right? At the left side is the temporomandibular joint here. And this is the uh, one. Sorry, a moment, please. Okay, this is the joint. A shadow of the joint, and this is the shadow of the joint, and this is the bone of the coronoid process. Okay, 
this is all covered with bone. So what I want to do is ask the patient to open mouth open. See, wait, 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 a moment, please tutup. Okay. Still not, oh, well. tunggu, tunggu, tunggu. This is the gap. I put the probe transversely here. Open the mouth, please. Not yet. A moment. Okay, tutup. Open it. Okay, now while the mouth is open, increase the depth, please, 30. Okay, so then in this area, 35, please. 35 means 35. Okay, turn on color, please. Kebawahin, kebawahin, kebawahin terus, 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 terus. Okay, we can see pulsating artery there, right? Okay, not that big one, but at the right side. Kebawahin lagi, kebawahin lagi, kebawahin lagi terus, terus, bawah, bawah. Okay, this one. Here. Okay, the pulsating artery here. Okay, freeze. Okay, gak apa-apa. Uh, review. Paling bawah. Okay, so then this is the coronoid process. Okay, here is the masseter muscle. And this is the pterigo mandibular space already here. Down there. And before, previously, uh, we can see. Enggak, buang, buang ini buang. Oke, okay, Chris. Oke, okay. uh, mundurin dikit. Oke, okay, stop. Oke, okay. so this is the coronoid process, the masseter muscle. So this area is the PMS where we can find the maxillary artery here. So we insert the needle into here. How? I hold the probe like this previously, right? So I do it out of plain technique from this side into this target. Just uh, adjacent to the artery. Okay, so I insert the needle, for example, kasih color yang merah boleh. So I insert the needle, I find the needle tip here. So means that it's not enough, the depth. So I withdraw the needle a bit, and then I make the needle direction steeper a bit. Then I find the needle here, and then withdraw it again, steeper more, and then here, here until I reach this area, and then do long aspiration and give quite a lot of amount of uh, lidocaine. We can give uh, 4 cc of lidocaine, 1% index standard person, uh, 2 milligram there. And withdraw the needle and quickly press the site of injection. That's for V2. And for the V1, just like before, minta jauh yuk. Yeah. This is the tragus. This is the lateral of the nose. I put imaginary line like this. And please. Okay. Feel the... Uh, less resistance, which is the coronoid nodes. Coronoid nodes is here. Okay. Put the probe here like this. Okay. Boleh pegang deh. Put the probe transversely there. We find the uh, gap already here because I'm uh, just at the hole here. But if I do it this way, then the bone, all is bone. Then I must Ask the patient to open her mouth, buka. Then there is my target. Okay, kasih color. And ke bawahin. Bawahin, 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 terus. And there is the artery there, down under where the PMS is. Okay, 
and then I move the transducer more anteriorly. I can still find the tutup mulutnya boleh sekarang. Okay. So now then I will see another structure which is the maxilla. Okay. Uh, color ni ke kiri in. Move the color to the left side. Uh, higher bit ke atas in dikit. Can you see the redness of the artery there? Okay. Okay. Maju in. Enggak, enggak. Freeze, freeze. Save. Review. Yang kedua. Oke. Okay. Pas merah-merah di stop. Already an hour? Yeah. Not yet. Oke, okay, wait. So, this is the maxilla bone. This is the coronoid bone. And here is the pterygo palatine, the space where the uh, artery of maxillary there. And this is the area where we are going to compartment block to do the V3 uh, maxillary block. How again the probe is here now? Right? We do it out of plane and reach this target. Okay, hopefully it will be understood uh, quite well. I will show you the slide. Yeah. Slide no be in any sama saya. Thank you, Beck. Yeah, belum. Tunggu ya. Okay, so what I just did before is this one. In Bahasa, it's called GAPTEC. I'm not too good in doing this stuff. Computer. Okay, so then the first step is fill the tragus. Make imaginary line to the lateral uh, nose, and then fill the gap here. Fill the gap here, which is the coronoid nodes here. Okay, mana slide ya? Okay, and then uh, ask the patient to close and open her mouth several times when we palpate the uh, area to see in the image on the screen that we will find the coronoid uh, process. Okay. And then after we see the coronoid process, we will see if the gap is uh, wide open, we will see the masseter. We will see the masseter muscle here. Okay. And uh, try to turn on color doctor where the uh, lateral pterygoid uh, plate is there which means in between the masseter and the lateral pterygoid is the PMS, the perigomanibular space, right? So insert the needle in this area, do compartment block. Okay, like this, out of plane, insert the needle through this hole, but of course using the ultrasound as guidance and give local anesthetic there and the dexamethasone also. We need longer needle. Usually I use this needle is spinal needle. You see the tip is red and the length is more or less eight and a half centimeter. <clears throat> okay. And then we to do the V3 compartment block, we translate the probe more anteriorly a bit until we see the maxillary tuberosity here. And again, we see a gap here, which uh, is the lateral plate of pterygoid process, and we find the maxillary artery, and the target is right there where the cursor is. Okay, and then done, 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 done. The complication, of course, because this is highly vasculatory area, be careful of the hematoma. So, right after we withdraw the needle, compress it. Okay. But if the hematom is still happening, then we ask the patient to do ice compression. Okay. Uh, okay. It's done, I think.
Are uh, all there is a video there? No? Pa Ala? Ada videonya? Dibuang ya. I think I have video here to be uh, shown to you, but mm, no. Oh yeah. Okay. But fortunately, I've shown you how to do the V2 and V3 compartment block using ultrasound. Although we cannot reach the trigeminal ganglion inside the skull. We can do the blockade of the V2, V3 here. Besides, if we don't want to do that, we can reach the uh, supraorbital, infraorbital, and submental nerve block. Okay, that's all that I can give you right now in the shortest of time. If there's question, please feel free to ask. Yeah, thank Hope you very much. Okay, that was a very comprehensive lecture that you've given today. So uh, I'm so happy that uh, you've shared that pearls to us and I hope that uh, everyone uh, learned something today. So uh, let's open this now for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, kindly just raise your hand. <laughs> Press the... Hi, Dr. Dia. Any question? Okay, there's a question here. Can we do RFA under ultrasound guidance? That's the first question. From who? Um, uh, RF, radio frequency to the, uh, which part of the nerve? To the supraorbital, infraorbital, or trigeminal ganglion? Usually we do the trigeminal ganglion RF to treat the trigeminal neuralgia, but using fluoroscope because we cannot reach the trigeminal ganglion means I will not do the RF to the trigeminal uh, ganglion. But if we want to do the uh, supraorbital, infraorbital, or submental uh, nerve RF, yeah, but please be careful because it is uh, very superficial here. I prefer to do it, uh, to do the block. Maybe it will last one month. I can uh, repeat the procedure next month if the pain comes back. Okay, the next question is, uh, how can we know that the injection don't, don't enter the sinus? Okay. The sinus is different side from the perigomandibular space, right? So then to be sure that we are not there, we must know the anatomy of the skull here. Where is the sinus? Where is the perigomandibular space? The perigomandibular space is here. Okay, so uh, if our anatomical knowledge and our skill of the ultrasound is quite good. We will not reach, never we will reach the sinus. So this area is very advanced technique. Don't do it if you never do the nerve block. The musculoskeletal one is the basic one. If you already expert in doing the musculoskeletal ultrasound, then you continue with the nerve because the nerve is more delicate than the musculoskeletal one. After that, if we already can do the spine. The spine is more delicate, more advanced than the nerve, then we will hopefully may try to do the head and neck procedure. Because see, if we miss and enter the sinus, Dr. Penny has already asked what happened. If we enter the oof, basis of the cranium, then we will reach the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Not to discourage, but yeah, be careful. Okay, any more question? Uh, there's another question here. Can we do sphenopalatin ganglion block? Yeah, the sphenopalatin uh, block is actually nearby. You see, this is camera, right? Here. 
Bisphenopalatin. Can you see it? But I'm. I don't bring my uh, bisphenopalatine right now. But you see, here, this one. This one is phenopalatine fossa. This one. If I do fluoroscopic guidance uh, injection, I proceed from these coronoid nodes into this area. So more or less, it is similar to do the V3 compartment block through this. Yes, we can. But of course, it is infiltration only, compartment block. Okay, can you see it? Here. It is like triangle. It is like a flower vase. Oops. How to make you see it? Uh, I want to show you this one. Okay, this. Okay, this is triangular shape of Sphenopalatine fossa, where Sphenopalatine ganglion is. We can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, TCT. So, oh, most welcome. Any, any more question? Any more question from the floor, please? I am just curious if you've ever used dextrose water during these procedures also? Hmm. For dextrose, for nerve is quite good. Use the uh, dextrose 5% for the uh, supraorbital nerve block, for the infraorbital nerve block, and for the subtental nerve block. It's good. It's good. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Yes, Dr. Daniel asked that uh, can we do the coronoid? Not entry point the same when we do the sphenopalatine ganglion block? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's also a question here about the precaution, but I think you already mm -hmm. answered this one. Yeah, precaution is always about infection. I don't want to give the patient infection, so do I an antiseptic procedure well. And then I don't want to give the patient hematoma because this is very highly vasculatory area. So then careful with the medication put in there. Because then once we are, our tip, our needle tip is in the lumen of the artery, then the medication will run everywhere to the head. Be careful. But then if hematoma only, the patients will here complain a bit why I get so big swollen here at my face, but it's okay. But don't give infection, don't give the medication into the uh, blood vessel. Okay. So is, the is, knowledge of the mm -hmm. anatomy of the head is a must. Yeah. Okay, there's a question here about uh, EMJ. I think this is both related the other one is oh, yeah. about, uh, the tmj and about the prp oh prp is very good for joint okay this is the tmg right temporomandibular joint every joint will do good using prp but yeah as we know prp uh the evidence base is not too much now but I believe that PRP will do good. And I do PRP also here. And the result is good. But usually it is caused by a repetitive injury to the joint. So we must give education to the patients to, uh, if the cause of the repetitive injury because of the mal, mal alignment of the maxilla and the mandible, then he or she must do correction to the uh, malalignment of the maxilla and mandible because then the repetitive injury will be worse than normal person. Okay. Dr. Novi, can I also ask how many 
in your experience, like how many sessions do you usually do before these trigeminal neuralgia response? And do you have to inject all of the sites that you mentioned or do you just find for like swelling and inflammation over a certain nerve then inject that area or do we inject uh, most of the sites that you've just shown us earlier? Thank you. Oh. Oh, very good question. Depends on the uh, nerve involvement. Usually, the involvement of trigeminal neuralgia is V2 and V3 only. This middle finger and uh, ring finger. So, our target is if we don't uh, dare to do the compartment block, then we reach the infraorbital and submental block only. Don't do the supraorbital nerve block because there's no involvement of V1. But if the involvement is V1 and V2, then do the uh, supraorbital nerve block and the infraorbital nerve block. If suppose the patient suffers from V3 only, then submental nerve block only. But In then your of course, yeah, pardon? So, sorry, okay, you're still saying something. Yeah. But of course, because the nerve that comes out from the surface of the skull innervate only the surface area, then the inside will not be covered. That's the problem. But at least we can reduce the suffering of the patient. At least, yeah, maybe 50% of the suffering is reduced. Okay, and we cover it with the oral medication. The rest of so the pain. Normally, doctor, how many sessions do you let your patient uh, come back after a week or maybe two weeks or how often do they come back or just one session usually? Usually, the blocks will last for one month, more or less, roughly. So after the pain comes back, they will come back. But if the pain is still, yeah, uh, at the numeric scale one or two and three, they will accept it as no pain. And then after the pain uh, increased to four or five, then we will come back. Usually one month. Thank you. So it's quite good. Welcome. For Any the other question? Okay, I think there, there's no question anymore. So thank you very much, TCT, for that wonderful lecture. And thank you for uh, joining our mask ultrasound uh, zoom online course and i hope everybody learned something today uh, i learned something today a lot of new things and uh, next week i just would like to make an announcement next week uh, we have also uh, a conference that will be given by uh, four speakers so i will be giving you a new id and a new password for those of you who would like to attend, kindly uh, give me a messenger message. I can give you the new ID by Monday. So uh, today we have like 100 participants. So uh, wow. this is a breakthrough for us. I didn't realize wow. uh, we have too much. Yes, so to learn from you, TCT. So uh, we cannot go beyond 100. So. Actually, we try to limit it and we hope we can limit it because uh, even if uh, we wanted to accommodate all of you, I think we cannot really accommodate everyone. So it would be on a first come first serve basis. If you get in within the first 10 minutes, you're in. Because I noticed mm -hmm. that in about 12 minutes, it's full. Wow. So, uh, so I don't want you to miss that. And uh, all of you are still welcome to join the next courses next week. It will start Tuesday. And that would be Dr. Daniel Su, who will talk about uh, performing arts ultrasound in medicine. And together with, we have two speakers on Tuesday and uh, Kentaro Onishi from Pittsburgh, who will talk about uh, MSK ultrasound research. Then we have uh, Tolga Ergunink on uh, Thursday. And of course we have Dr. Abdallah from Egypt on a Friday. So kindly take a look at our announcements and just notify us if you have any problems. We're, we're willing to uh, respond to you quickly. And I hope uh, 
this will be a good experience for all of you. If you have any comments, questions, let us know so we can improve. So uh, thank you very much again. And thank you, TCT. That was a wonderful lecture. I really like it very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So uh, I think this uh, concludes our meeting for today. And uh, again, thank you, TCT and your staff.